Vyhrocený střed dvou světů, sportovců, celebrit a velkých osobností. Nejpopulárnější český zápasník Carlos Terminator Vémola poprvé a možná naposledy v boxu, a tedy mimo svou komfortní zónu. A proti němu rapper Marpo. Jak si Vémola povede v disciplíně, o které mnozí říkají, že není jeho nejsilnější? A hlavně, v jaké se vrátí formě po více než roční pauze? Měli se utkat v MMA pod otevřeným nebem na Pražské štvanici. Jejich cesty se však rozešly, ale teď se znovu spojí. Miláček publika Miloš Melon Petrášek si to v boxu rozdá se svým slovenským rivalem a bývalým šampionem Samuelem Pirátem Krištofičem. Dokonce i šampion bantamové váhy Jonas Magard dostal chuť okusit box mezi osmi provazy. Takzvaný dánský žralok sáhl po opravdu velkém soustu. Tím není nikdo jiný než tituly ověnčený supertalentovaný bedboj Vašek Sivák. Nenáviděný nebo milovaný bohumínský rebel Baba Jaga Mikulášek si v pěstních přestřelkách libuje. A teď má šanci si to užít naplno. Po čtyřech letech nucené pauzy se do akce vrací držitel 3 o v prvním kole. Michal Kotalík, kterému se tím splní sen, v který už ani nedoufá. Možná nejlepší boxer v oktagonu a bývalý titulový vyzivatel Apollo Silva si to v boxu rozdá s neporaženým slovenským vojákem z povolání Markem Mazuchem. Michal Krčmář a Vlado Lengál. Trávili spolu čas v jedné vile v rámci Octagon výzvy. Sdíleli společný pokoj, byli parťáci, ale těmto dnům odzvonilo. Teď si oba řekli o vzájemný zápas a ten taky dostali. My se tak můžeme těšit na skvělý souboj dvou dekorovaných postojářů a šampionů svých disciplín. Společenská událost roku z pražské O2 arény. Octagon Vémola vs. Marpo. Už 21.5. v pražské O2 aréně. Lístky v sítích Ticket Portal a Ticket Master. V pantamové váze se proti sobě postaví Lucie Pudilová s Karol Japa Jarivake. Ta má na svém kontě celkově 12 zápasů, z toho 9 vítězných a plných 8 ukončila před limitem, což je fantastická bilance, málo kdy výdaná v ženském MMA. Očekávám, že se mě možná pokusí dát na zem, protože je black belt v jiu-jitsu. Lucie Pudilová má ale smůlu na své soupeřky. Jarivake opět nenavážila a Pudilová se tak musí opět rozhodovat, jestli nastoupí do zápasu s těžší soupeřkou. Nakonec jsme se domluvili s týmem, že ten zápas vezmeme, protože takhle furt schazovat a nemít zápas, tak už by to nebylo dobrý. O tak čeká 27-letou zápasnici její 20. jubilejní zápas kariéry. Z 19 předchozích dokázala 12 krát odcházet jako vítězka. Bem, ela é forte. Ela já esteve em eventos grandes, mas eu creio que é, vai, vai ser uma luta boa. Pudilová se snad konečně znovu představí před domácím publikem. So next up we welcome the ladies to the octagon cage. First up, Karol Japa Jarawaki making her way by way of Brazil. Also, Japa, the nickname from uh, uh, Japanese heritage there as well. Now she's making the walk, a walk we almost thought wouldn't happen yesterday, Luke. At weigh-in, she missed weight considerably, two and a half kilograms. At one point, Lucia Pudilova said, I'm not taking this fight. I'm not stepping in there with somebody who's not professionally uh, made it on the scales as they said they'd agreed to. Finally, there was agreements made outside that today Carol had to step on the scales at 66 kilograms. Now, I was on stage for the stare downs yesterday. I saw her step on the scales. Yesterday, she was 69 kilograms. So she had to make another proper weight cut today before rehydrating this afternoon and getting ready for this. She's already been through so much. It says a lot that she didn't just step away from this fight, that she wanted to do that weight cut to get back in there again. 
but it's one of those factors outside the fight that you wonder what it will affect within the cage tonight. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, Pudjalova's coach, John Kavanaugh, he's, he's very, very specific about that. I know that because I've tried to match some of my goals against his goals as well. And it, he hates when people miss the weight. So he doesn't. So he actually does surprise me with the fight's happening and Kavanaugh's allowed it to happen because he's rejected and turned down fights before. But I think Pudjalova's been out of the cage for a little while. So she's... she's needs that rhythm to come back, you know, she's trying to push forward towards the title and winning here tonight will help her do that. Yeah, and this lady has also been out of competition for a little while. 2019 was her last fight, TKO victory after Tamiris Marquez. And now finally, set and ready after what has been a traumatic, dramatic week. Carol Japa Yarowecki is inside the cage and set to make her Octagon debut. And here she comes, another icon of Czech combat sports. A real unique individual as well, Luke. She is so focused on this fight career. Nothing simply affects her on the outside. The only time I've ever seen her get emotional was the one loss she's had under Octagon. Octagon 26, where she, uh, uh, she lost to the Brazilian Bernardo. And uh, in that fight, she just got out grappled. And she said, I didn't think somebody could do that to me. And she sat in the cage, refused to be interviewed, kind of just soaked up that moment. Since then, she has stepped away. Since then, she has made the biggest change of her career, of her life, moving her camp to SBG Island. You'll see John Kavner in the background there. She says it's the best, best decision she's ever made. She sacrificed so much. Friends, family, being at home, all those comforts that come with it. And she's put herself outside her comfort zone to train with the likes of Sinead Kavanagh, uh, the, the Bellator fighter, to improve herself, improve her tools. And she showed the improvements in the Octagon Prime 4 match against Marta Valachek. Every time she gets in now, we're seeing an improved put all over. When you look at the stage of the career is, to see someone still wanting to evolve, that says exactly what this sport means to her. Exactly that. And I mean, this is another step forward for her, another development fight. You said that she was in her, in her only loss, she was out grappled and she couldn't believe that that could happen to her. For me, Yappa, she's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I feel like that's going to be the only really way she's going to look to take this fight. So, pujolova has got to try and overcome that now again, that challenge. And that thing that she lost at before and devastated her, she needs to prove that she's developed that skill set. And working over at SPG obviously has a lot of partners to help, help that happen. And Octagon Prime 4, it was a rematch against Valachek and John Kavanagh said that's, an, that's a perfect match for us to be the first ones to coach her with because you're now going to see the difference. We can look at the first fight and we can look at the second fight and you can see the difference that she's made in her camp and what difference that makes in the cage. For me, the first fight, well, it was a split decision. The second fight was as dominant as you can get a performance to be. Outstruck her, outgrappled her gritted her within that fight to take the unanimous decision. So if you're looking at what improvements were made, that's a great example. Tail of the tape now. You see their height and reach on the side. The pull over, slight experience advantage as well. And seven years the younger is the Czech fighter. We are set and ready for this bout. You see the weight there. It's supposed to be at bantamweight, 64 kilos. Is what Jarewaki has weighed in at. Let's get it underway. Máme před sebou zápas ženské bantamové váhy 61 kg. Vaším rozhodčím v oktagonu je Jan Voborník. Pojďme si představit obě ženy. Nejprve Modrý roh. 34 let, 168 cm, 64 kg na váze. Strong team pod trenérem Verkem Silvou. Má na svém kontě 12 zápasů, 9 vítězství. Z toho 8 ukončila před limitem a 3 porážky v modrém rohu representing Brazil Karol Japa Jarivake Červený roh 27 let 173 cm 61,2 kg Straight Blast Jim pod trenérkou Jacky Almeidou Davem Rochem a Rayem Barnem a Johnem Kavanahem má na svém kontě 19 zápasů, 12 vítězství, 4 ukončení před limitem a 7 porážek v červeném rohu za Česko. Lucie 
Budějová! Ladies, you know the rules. Keep the fight free all the time, fight fair, well, and always solving. If you want to touch gloves, do that, and go back to your corner. Touch gloves, best of luck in your fight. Reluctant touch of gloves there between the two. Pudilova in the red corner, taking on Jarewicki in the blue corner. Jan Verbornik will be in charge. This catchway bout, you look at the tip sport odds there. Well in the favour of Lucia Pudilova. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Luke Barnett, calling the action. Starting out with a nice stiff jab. Is Pudilova controlling the distance in the centre of the octagon? And put it over as well. She fights so long, Luke. Really good with that lead jab, but very aggressive as well. Steps into range, looks to make that jab work. And Stein here early, just with footwork and a jab, just to, uh, trying to establish herself. And she is somebody as well you can emotionally see. Well, just how tuned in she is. One of the best examples I've got is when she was set to fight uh, Cornelia Holm, I believe it was. Before the fight, her coach uh, had to receive severe medical attention. He had a real a heart issue. He got taken to hospital. Then she said she would still fight. She found another corner. Then she got literally stuck in a lift. May, finally made her way to the cage, then claimed victory. With all that going on behind the scenes, to still step in and put on a performance which saw a break, a losing streak, and back on the winning runs, that says a lot about her mentality. And she's coming out here sharp early in this fight, just controlling the distance. Really difficult for Carol now to find her way in and she gets caught with that right hand. You know, Carol's got a gamble, she's got to come forward and put it over, like you said, moving very well, controlling the distance. Now, now trying to counter is Carol. Yeah, Carol, one of the, the attributes she got is that durability, but you don't want to lean on it too much, do you? Especially early on, you don't want to take unnecessary shots, damaging shots. Oh, good combo there from Matt Pudilova. Yeah, beautiful right hand over the top of the jab. Set that up very well. Oh, a nice jab. You see blood now coming from the mouth of Carol already. And the rocks her back there with that left hand. I like how she's moving, you know, she, she's really aware of the grappling, I believe, of Carol. She doesn't want to get caught stagnant and static. That's the way you can allow takedowns, you know, or entries at least can open up from that. So she's throwing, you know, very active, using just straight, crisp shots and doing it very, very well. I just love how she's laterally moving left and right. Nice right hand, oh. finishes up with the combo. Now moving in, big combo, looking to pile on the pressure, is put it over. Great control of range. She went in there, unleashed the combo, then stepped out of range before Carol could co uh, come back. Yeah, she stepped out with a jab as well. Used that jab just to safeguard her exit. Tough for Carol now. She needs to find something, needs to take some risks and not just stick on the end of these long, straight shots from Pudilova. Feels like she's second guessing herself at the moment. Yeah, and Pudilova just growing every second in confidence. And one thing that will give her confidence, and I'm, I'm sure she's very grateful for it, is the likes of John Kavanagh, head of SBG Island, making the trip. That says a lot about what he thinks about her as a fighter, right? Yeah, exactly that. I mean, landing whenever she wants at the moment. Big right hand, puts some oh. power behind these now. Carol wading forward. Reckless abandon. Already that damage starting to wear on the face there of Carol Yarowicki. And put it over, not, not a lot of high finish rate. Four of her 12 victories are by finish, two submissions, two knockouts. This doesn't carry, carry an awful amount of power, but she, she has great output, very high output, moves well. Very rich and very professional. You very rarely see her get tired, or overly tired. Obviously, you get tired fighting in a cage yeah, 15 minutes. But I think you're exactly right when you look back at that um, Marta right, Valachek fight. Ooh, that what Valachek fight, that was... So twice she went three rounds with that lady and never seemed to wilt as far as output pressure. Just winning this fight with a jab, 
so far. Landing combinations too with the jab, sort of setting up everything else. It's a great jab as well, isn't it? It's long and strong. If you watch, she uses it with different angles. So she, she'll even throw up what I call the spear, which is when the thumb's pointing up. And then she'll turn it over and then she'll do a little up jab. Then she'll come to the side. So it's not always the same punch that she throws. It looks like it, but it's not. And that just beats the guard a little bit better. Circles out nicely as well. Good yeah. cage awareness, not getting driven back to the cage by Carroll. Yeah, it just needs to not get drawn into a wall. You know, just keep doing this, keep moving, don't take damage, and wait for the opening. I mean, we're, we're coming to the final 20, 15 seconds of this first round, and she's been dominant, really, in the first. Carroll now is trying to step up and get some damage of her own there. And well, that's what Budjilova needs to avoid, you know, going into that no man's land and just throwing for the sake of it. She doesn't need to do that. Just watch John Kavanagh walk in there with a huge smile on his face as he put the stool down for Budjilova. And you would be happy with that round, right? You, there's so many positives to take from that and especially working off that jab, keeping that range, keeping that distance. Yeah, exactly that. I'm, I'm sure that was the game plan and she established it very well. Kept the center of the, the oxygen for, you know, for the entirety of the first round. There was a few moments where, you know, she got caught up in, a, in some unnecessary back and forth. But really that stiff, sharp jab just paying dividends throughout the entire round. I'm paying good attention as we talk, you talk us through some of this action. Just, just to John Kavanagh, some of the instruction that he's given. I like how she was here. We get to see it with nice little. That's almost a 9, 10, 11 punch combination. Once she finds her range, she just keeps throwing. And here you see Carol just kind of wade forward, reckless abandon, and Pudjilova always at a distance. Yeah, in between rounds there, John Kavanagh was complimenting the jab, but then saying, bring the right elbow. Yeah. Bring that through. As Carol's coming forward, that makes complete sense because she's cutting the range. For me, I'd like to see Pudjilova, you know, start with the right hand sometimes, faint the left start with the right because it would go straight through the guard. Yeah, straight down the pipe. After, you know, so many jabs being thrown, she's, Carol's so aware of the jab coming. Beautiful jab there as I say that. Now she can faint that and throw the right and it's going to land with a bit more, bit more zing. No, a right hand doesn't always need to follow a jab. We could just have it come straight off the back, turn that right hip in, get some real power behind it. And let's see. flip it around. Go on. There you see the up jab. She just changed it to a different angle of a jab, like I was talking about earlier. Great footwork there to circle away from the fence. Carol, you know, looks completely lost. What does she need to do? Let's, let's put you in that corner. What advice would you have given her going into the second round? You need to get a hold of her. You know, you can't, you can't just stay at the end of this range. You need to come forward. You know, not, not with reckless abandon like she did, but you need to throw. Don't wait and counter. Come, you throw first. Throw first, and then let's get hold of the legs. You're not winning this battle. You need to change the dynamic. And she's eating shots no matter what, right? So even if you eat shots trying to get the clinch, at least you're trying to make something positive exactly that, at the end exactly of it. Exactly that. I mean, if you, you get caught on the way in, who cares? You got in. You got hold of her. See you know, it. That was some stiff jab there. And that jab has opened up the cut on the right cheek. Now it's starting to... Uh, Weep with blood down the right side of the cheek of Carroll. Another great display of footwork. There we go, changes up levels, that's good, gets punished for it, but at least she's trying. That was great hips. And even if you're trying, you get your opponent to think about something a little different, right? You're not just the same stationary body in front of them, you've, you've made a difference, you've made an adjustment. Well, I don't think Lucy stood still for a second, you know, in this entire fight, it's great to see. Three minutes now left in round number two. What a strong opening from Lucia Pudelova. Oh, there's, there's right the elbow. elbow. There's the elbow, having a call for it. A little bit out of range. She really feels secure enough to open up now, Lucy. She should be able to, you know, maybe double that jab up, throw a right hand behind it, or start right hand, left to right hand, start trying, start feeding these combinations, go low. Like you said, you know, Carol's extremely durable and tough, but maybe going just headshots all the time. She's had a hard weight cut, twice had to make weight, and made weight again today. If you go down to the, you know, to the body, it could maybe hurt a little bit more than the head. Some people are just crazy durable. Yeah, she's proven that in some of her other fights as well. Watch Sunback. Really can take a shot. 
She's also proven herself as far as uh, accolades as well, held titles, pretty decent titles as well in uh, good promotions across the pond. And Lucia looks so comfortable. She feels like feels like she's got two or three more gears that she could go up in this round or this fight. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like she could just turn it up a little bit now. She's having an absolute success with whatever she tries to do. I'd like to see she, she, she attended a head kick a little bit earlier. I'd like to see a bit more of that. Let's mix in some, some different levels, some different weapons. There you go. See that with the lead at lead elbow. Yeah, a stepping elbow there. Again, with the oh. right elbow steps in. And like you said, she's just, it's like the floor's on fire. She's not putting her feet in one position for more than a second. Constant movement. Nice change. Team yeah, changing angles leg. and then changing weapons as well. Needs to stay off that fence now. Good awareness. Carol blocking well there with the elbows. 50. Like Carol's just stalking. She's not kind of the cage. She, she needs to. Step right rather than just follow her all the time. Step right here, cut her off. Don't let her control the distance. She's just plodding along, getting caught with a jab. 35 seconds now left in the second round. This is a great fight for, you know, someone new to the sport. The, the, oh, well, sorry, this is exactly what you should be doing. You should be throwing the way she's moving and, and way, her understanding of distance and using those straight shots is fantastic. You know, she really is putting on a real show. It's clean, isn't it? It's clean as far as... Clean the, fundamentals. Yeah. Absolute fundamental victory, this. I'd like to see her, like you said, step up again, which she's doing now. Oh. <laughs> and then you can see she's got it in her. You can see she's got the technique. She's got the diversity of strikes. She can push just do a lead. I call a cobra kick. One left leg come up to the head. But why is it taking so long to get there? You know, yeah. she's been dominant for two rounds. A beautiful performance. But maybe just happy to get the cage time. Yes, yeah, stepping out, keeping active as well. Bouncing back from that loss with a, a victory at Octagon Prime Four. Then if she claims victory here, surely at some point we've got to look to crown a, uh, a bantamweight female champion. And her name's got to be up there. We look back at some of this action again. These are the nice strikes, but everything with an angle, Luke. Everything where she's turning and giving herself an exit from the attack, the entry. Stepping elbow there. And over the top, the right elbow, nasty elbow, just glances across Carol. And let's give credit to her opponent, because she's still in there, she's still plodding forward, she's still taking these shots. But she has to do something hugely dramatic, I'm sure, to turn this around. Yeah, I don't think she's going to be allowed to. I, don't, I mean, that's it. Pujilova keeps fighting the way she is. It's so stifling, stifling you know, this jab. You need to see urgency from Carol now in this third. She needs to just take a jab, take a shot to give a shot. She needs to come forward. She's getting hit either. This is better. She's getting hit either way. So let's let's be urgent. Let's go in and try and finish this fight in the third round because you're definitely down two rounds at this point. Yes, yeah, strong, strong opening two rounds. And what is also impressive from Puddleover is, is the pace. It's consistent. It's high output, good movement. Like I said, a true professional. She, she never, ever looks tired, never left, and it looks like she's overwhelmed, calm. Taylor, like you said, takes it very, very seriously, moved her whole life over to Ireland for this sport. And it shows. You know, the dedication shows. Oh. Goes in for that right elbow. Just misses with that as well. That was a nasty elbow over the top. Slicing down. You know, the only thing that could really put a cherry on top of this performance is a finish. She's, this has been perfect from her. She's done exactly what she's needed to do. She's active, she's throwing shots, she's in her face, she's controlling the distance. This is great to watch. Kavanaugh says, let the legs go a little bit. I would agree. Let's start throwing hands and feet together. And maybe different levels, go to the body a bit more and rather than just always to the head. Nice oh, stiff jab, as I say that, though. 
And we're talking about how lucky Lucia Putalova has been to be able to go to SBG. But you've got to think, I'm just picturing her and Sinead Kavanagh sparring. That's surely helped Beautiful Kavanagh as well. Elbow. Yeah, definitely. You know, she's an asset being there for everyone else. That's well, some people don't. sometimes they undervalue that, especially when they go to a well-known gym. For the gym, it's such a such a benefit having fresh meat, having new bodies, having at having this level talent, as well. Some of you can match the rounds, the pace, the, the 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 tenacity, and want want to fight and train that hard. Three minutes now left in this third and final round. Of what has been an absolute clinic so far from Lucia Pudilova? Yeah, clinic's the word. They, you see the up jab as well. It's just been a movement, straight shots. Movement, straight shots. Yeah. She's added in the kicks now, but that's been for like. 13 minutes or 12 and a half minutes, we've just seen great movement. And beautiful straight shots down the pipe. Hands are so loose, snapping the jab out, shoulders flicking and flinching, fainting. Still Carroll moving on, still walking down for the lower, but it's not able to get anything off. Yeah, Carol's, she's in there, and she's trying her best, but it's just a bit of a difference of level, you can see it. It's really being proven here, just the understanding. Now she's really game, coming forward. She's trying to force the issue, but would you like to be too smooth? One minute, 35 seconds now. Still snapping that jab out. Oh, nice dig to the body there from Carol. This is the first time she's been in on any sort of entry, but look at how well it's dealt with. Yeah, great frames, great awareness, steps back, doesn't even want to engage. Perfect, don't, don't have anything to prove. Why give her an opportunity that she doesn't deserve? She's got to earn it. She's got to get the takedown. One minute left. One minute left in this third and final round. Nice right hand there came over the top. Oof. Oof. There's that elbow again. Carol like a zombie just walking through it, coming forward, forward, forward. Not offering much of offense, but... Happy, still happy there, right? Still yeah. eating everything. And to say the damage she built up in round number one, she's not taken too much more damage than that. No, and the cardio is impressive as well because... Because of the two weight cuts, right? Two oh. weight cuts, change of level, effortless. Set that up for 14 minutes and 40 seconds, but <laughs> forgot to take her in the end. I've got to say, there was a hell of a smile on John Kavanagh's face as that went down to the mat. Yeah, he was asking for it. He said, let's see you change levels. She's just listening. Again, shows her level. Just so cool and calm there. He's wearing a bit of a bruise. No, it hasn't, hasn't been easy sailing, but it's definitely been plain sailing. Great performance from Pujolova. And that... Uh, Fundamentally, just so sound. We, we talk about that and how important those fundamentals are, but look at that for a display of, of range, simple techniques. Shows the discipline, doing running around the cage, but just like you do at the end of sparring. You know, she's got cardio and fitness for days. I guess a, a warm embrace there from her team, her corner, SBG Island. Talk us through some of this action, Luke. Well, it was the same for 15 minutes. Pujolova moving her feet and landing straight shots. She mixed up some beautiful combinations, but most of the work was done behind that stiff, stinging jab. Then she started introducing the elbows and the head kicks. You know, listened to her corner very, very well. And oh, like you said, a clinical performance to definitely take home this victory. I'm not a judge. Well, listen, I think she might have made it the easiest decision of the judges' uh, scorecards of the night. Again, we're just getting a little look at this action. This was as close as Carol came to a, a takedown, but was easily dealt with by Pudilova. And there's that right elbow over the top. 
Scores are in. Look at the numbers there. Huge advantage inside of Lucy Pudilova. Fighters are coming together. Let's make it official. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Dámy a pánové, známe výsledek tohoto zápasu. Let's see how the judges score this fight. Pojďme se podívat na to, jak bodoví viděli tento zápas. All three judges score this fight 30-27. Všichni tři bodoví viděli tento zápas 30-27 a vítězkou se stává Lucie Pudilová. Lucie, gratulace, tak nakonec se... Bolí tě ta ruka? Já jsem si asi první kolo něco udělala, pak jsem proto boxovala jenom tu první jednou rukou, tak se chci omluvit, že to nebylo zase tak úplně skvělé. Náhlas máš mluvit. Jo. Omlouvám se, že jsem si asi zlomila ruku a musela jsem boxovat celou dobu jenom s jednou. <laughs> Já myslím, že na to, že si boxovala s jednou rukou, to bylo fantastické. Doufejme, že není zlomená, protože chtěl jsem říct, že to byla taková boxerská generálka na tu autu arenu, ale teď teda uvidíme. <laughs> Uvidíme. Tak eš, ještě něco chceš k tomu říct? Chtěla bych poděkovat všem, co mi pomáhli si připravit na tenhle zápas, všem, co mi fandí, co mi fandili tady doma. Moc děkuji, vážím si toho. Lucie Pudilová, děkujeme my a snad to bude v pořádku.